Spark Books here. Today, I'm going to explain the book, Wired to Care, by Dev Patnayak and Peter Mortensen. Take care, enjoy the book, and have a nice day. Modern businesses seem to rely more on mounds of data and trend reports than on the needs and desires of actual customers. Wired to Care shows how businesses can use empathy to make connections with customers and discover what they really want. At a company-wide level, this kind of empathy leads to growth, and it can be a game-changer for individual employees. Key idea number one, companies succeed through empathizing with customers. Have you ever attended a conference to make a crucial product decision based solely on facts and forecasts? Many have been there. Business people often break data into manageable parts. Oversimplified, gathered information risks overlooking customer connections. To make good decisions, you need a real-life connection to those affected and the ability to sense their emotions. You need empathy. Empathy helps you understand client needs. Disney first seemed uninterested in an Animal Kingdom theme park since evidence suggested it would not profit. Executive Joe Road brought in a Bengal tiger to show empathy. Wild creatures were approved by Disney executives. The park attracted 8.9 million visitors a year after opening. Why do so many firms deliberately cut ties if empathy is so important? As it grows, a company loses touch with its regular clients. Strategy meetings and trend reports have replaced product and customer care. When Jell-O sales dropped, Executives analyzed quantitative data for hours. No one had eaten Jell-O in six months when questioned. How could they possibly empathize with their customers? Since you know empathy works for business, the following sparks will teach you how to employ it. Key idea number two, when you can't sympathize, employ your consumers. We get out with like-minded people, birds of a feather flock together. Why? Because we connect better with others who share our worldview. Because their interests are like ours, we can estimate how they would react to most circumstances. Thus, empathizing with them is obvious. To connect with customers, a company should hire people like them. Harley Davidson does that. Bicyclists admire the company headquarters. Pictures of bikes and banners from biker rallies decorate huge bike parking lots. Harley Davidson connects with customers through bike enthusiasm. It worked. Between 1986 and 2006, the company grew by double digits while the US auto industry stagnated. What if you can't hire customers? Take their place. Toy firms cannot hire customers. In these situations, try to understand their priorities. Take American Girl, a doll and book maker for young girls. They strive to understand primary school girls since they can't hire them. They get fan mail from tiny girls and watch kids play with their items. They can stay on top of their market by understanding what girls desire. Key idea number three, to maximize empathy, spread it throughout your organization. Imagine your corporation functioning in a huge, air-conditioned structure with only the top floor windows open, or anyone wanting to know the weather must call the office with open windows and wait for a report. It sounds silly, but if your company's only option to learn about client demands is through a customer assessment department, you're just letting one group test what's outside. Another way exists. Open empathy companies expect all employees to connect with customers. Like Nike, Nike gives employees basketball courts, soccer fields, and running tracks to act like customers and understand their needs rather than relying on a tiny department. Try this to make your company an open empathy organization. Help employees understand customers. Netflix handles this successfully by offering new hires a DVD player and subscription. As they use the product, they become customers and employees. However, connecting with clients requires creativity. Nike visited Japan before entering the market. After returning, they replicated Japanese teens' bedrooms with posters and a Japanese TV. Employees could understand the Japanese market. This strategy helped Nike succeed in Japan. Key idea number four, find new growth prospects by understanding your customers. Various people may get different judgments about the same object. Our views vary. We see what others miss and vice versa. Business is similar. A firm can grow by changing its outlook. Reframe your customers' problems to find fresh options. Target did this. Back to school sales of school goods like notebooks, pens, uniforms, and textbooks are usually strong. Target adjusted their mindset to stand apart. They perceived this moment as college kids stepping out for the first time. With major life changes and new products like Kitchen in a Box, they built a back to school campaign. Target's revenue rose 12%. By considering customer feedback, you can change your company model and improve your products. Kodak, a filmmaker, lagged behind the competitors. Japan might make cheaper film. After discovering customer perception, Kodak changed. Customers called them a photography company, not a film company. 
This discovery led Kodak to advertise the disposable camera as a way to capture memories. Successful, this repositioning led the disposable camera industry. Key idea number five, empathy may inspire daily effort. Mother Teresa, Gandhi, and Mandela shaped our world. Compared to these heroes and heroines, sitting in your office may seem dull. You're wrong, just alter your perspective. You must feel like you are making a difference to regard your work as positive. Many think their corporate or personal actions don't matter. Naturally, they underperform. All labor matters, everything matters, whether you make underpants or garden gnomes. We should also urge people to value their job. Clorox makes inexpensive, sanitary cleaning products. These things are useful, but they did not change our life. Clorox changed their image. They promoted the idea that moms are cleaning heroes who take care of their families, which resonated with mothers, and then launched Green Works, a chemical-free product line, to show their environmental commitment. Even workers at this typical cleaning company began to value their work. This basic connection to real, ordinary people made their responsibilities relevant. Putting yourself in someone else's shoes helps you understand how they see themselves and what they need, as well as how to better create, produce, and promote your products. To view more content like this, subscribe. Don't forget to like and turn on notifications. The channel really benefits from it. I appreciate you being here.